The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs in New York City and the Hamptons, covering Broadway and off-Broadway theater. Uh, I'm coming to you from the LTV studio in Wainscott, and today I have a guest that is uh, a lighting designer that has become an artist the past almost two decades now, mm -hmm. Stephen Cohn. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Stephen. Uh, Welcome. Thanks. Thank you thanks so for much for me. coming. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have a show at the White Gallery in Bridgehampton. Yes, uh, it's my the, first. It's my first show uh, of my paintings, and um, yeah, I'm really excited. I, I I never thought that I'd actually show this work, and um, is, is this the work we're going to? Yeah, have? there's this these are, these are a couple of pieces that uh, I, uh, that I've done and. I'm probably, I don't know how many pieces are going to be up. I, it, like I said, it's my first show. I have a part of the gallery I'm showing with four other gr great uh, local artists. And so, so what I really want to do is just let the audience know that you're going to have a show at okay. this gallery, at the White Gallery, and it's, uh, it's going to be on view August 22nd through September 10th mm -hmm. uh, on Main Street in, East, in Bridgehampton, in Bridgehampton, 2415 Main Street in Bridgehampton. But you know what I want to talk about before we even get to the later work that you're showing? Right. I like to talk about process okay. and how you got from A to Z, you know, as a lighting designer. And yeah. you brought a lot of images and stuff. So yeah, I, I think I brought you a couple of pictures, but, um, well, the Reader's Digest version is that I started a lighting company when I was 20 years old, many, four and a half decades ago. Uh, and I went on the road before. So let me stop you. So what yeah. made, what drew you to lighting to begin with? I was actually in high school, and I wasn't going to any classes except theater, and I was a bossy kind of guy, and I wanted to do everything in the production. I wanted to direct and build the sets, and I found out and that... And you could do it all. And too, I could right? do it all, and I, and I found out that lighting was something that I had a, a particular talent for and a penchant for, and I was also a musician at the time. And What did you play? Uh, I played a little piano. I, had, I played a little flute. It was terrible. Um, but I hung out with people who played. Well, you were young, you were 16, what? Yeah, I was about 18, 19, uh -huh. I think. And, uh, and I worked in a club in, uh, on Santa Monica Boulevard called the Starwood in 1973. Um, and so you're a California guy? Yeah, I'm a California guy. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. And we had a little lighting, an old, old lighting system and an old sound system, and I did both of them. And these bands would come in, and, you know, bands that were Van Halen before they were Van Halen. Oh, wow. And, you know, it, it became sort of a, a, a breaking spot for clubs, and I would do the lighting. And um, I had a friend of mine at the time who said, you know, you're really good at this. You do things on cue. You make things look interesting, because I was basically a, the a theater kid. Uh, but I had music and I had timing. Uh, I went and saw a show at the Forum, um, uh, and it changed my life. It was, what a, was the show? It, it was Jethro Tull, and it was <laughs> the first time it was at the Forum, which was the Do you Master's remember the Club, year? 1972. And the lighting system was very early on, and uh, you have to understand that throughout the time before, there was never anything that was suspended from the ceiling. It was all lighting that was built from the ground up. So th these guys had come up with a, a suspended lighting grid that you would see in a legitimate theater, but it was in an arena. And the house lights went out, these two lights came on, there was no follow spots, it was just very theatrical, and I said, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to do that. So I, had a, I was a, a little bit of a salesman, and I started a lighting company. And I cold a called. Bit of a yeah, a little bit. And I cold <laughs> called. This is me at twenty. Uh, I cold called a bunch of managers on the back of Billboard. I don't magazine. think many people at twenty would do that kind of thing. I think you're more than a little bit of a salesman. Well, <laughs> I think you're born and bred. Okay. Well, I eventually <laughs> came to New York, so that was. But God um, bless you is what I mean. Right. <laughs> right. So. Um, so anyway, we got the Billboard magazine, and on the back of Billboard magazine in in this, in 1973. The end of the year, they would print all the managers uh -huh. and their contact numbers. This is pre-cell phone fax, all that right. stuff. We sat in my apartment and we cold called every manager on the back just How to cool. say, you know, we have we're a lighting company and we want to do your tours. And we had two, we had two um, interviews uh, at the same day. And I was with a partner at the time. And the first band was Earth, Wind, and Fire, and it was the very first oh, wow. Earth, Wind, and Fire record. Uh -huh. It was that black and white cover, and I wanted to do that. Then the next call we had was for a little piano player named Billy Joel, who at the time had just had Piano Man, and out in the West Coast, you know, it wasn't as big a deal as it was in the East Coast. So I went to... So you took the... I took the Piano Man interview. 
met the manager, they, I cracked them up for some reason and they hired me. But I only had one lighting system. So I bullshitted them that I had two lighting systems. I went and rented some gear, showed up at rehearsals. They really didn't know what was happening and I was setting it up myself. I couldn't plug in two, two electric outlets, but I was building this lighting system. Packed it all up, went to Kansas City, did the first headline show. And after the show, I was packing the stuff in the truck and the sound engineer, who is still my best friend, comes pulling around and he says, uh, Billy wants to see you. And we were staying at, they were staying at Holiday Inns, you know, the old Holiday Inn courtyards uh -huh. with, the tool in the, with the pool in the middle. Uh, so I think I'm getting fired. So he puts me in the back of the rental car, takes me to the hotel, and I walk in the room and Billy's sitting there, pours me a drink, and he says, well, it's the same band, it's the same set list, it's the same show, but tonight something was very different. And by process of elimination, we figured it was the lighting. So you're hired. And 1974, I started to work with So they with liked him. it. 1974, it started, and I haven't turned back. And I've been working with Billy since 1974. And so. you still like for him now. Yeah. 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 See, we, we have actually some images. So let's, I, and I think from Billy Joe. Yeah, Madison there's Square a, Garden I think there's a picture from Madison Square Garden. Um, oh, this is fabulous. Yeah, this is uh, New York State of Mind at Madison Square what Garden. What year? What year? This, I think, was the beginning of this uh, run that we've, that we've done for the past five years. So I think this is probably. It's terrific. Uh, four years ago. It's uh, so New York. Yeah, and, and, you know, we're, we're at home and we're, you know, we're, we're family and we get to get together once a month and play this incredible gig at Madison Square Garden once a month and, and I'm still there doing it. I'm still there pushing the buttons and, and calling the follow spots and writing the set list because I'm the creative director now and myself and my partner do all of the, the video imagery that you see on those screens. So, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, and along this long 40 year career, I've, I've worked for a lot of other artists. Been very fortunate. I had a very, really good career. Worked for so many great Mariah Carey and the Eagles. Well, we have more images. Let's see. There's, okay. a, there's another, that's another that's Billy. That's another Billy. Another yeah. Billy, which is, that's, where, this is Madison Square Garden yep, again? Yep, and what show is this? You're this is the, probably from that same run of okay. shows, I believe. And then what else? We have another one? Uh, this is uh, Andrea Bocelli, which ironically happens uh, to be. I know, we talked about at that. Madison Square Garden. Well, you well. have done other venues. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All over the world. But which was interesting. You said to me earlier that. Uh, they're all black boxes to you because it's... Yeah. They're basically it, sports arenas. Madison Square Garden's a little different because it's New York and it has all of that, mm -hmm. that feeling behind it. But basically, we take a lighting system, we take a show in, mm -hmm. and we need power and four walls and seats and ushers, and then we put it up. So, I mean, the, it's oversimplification, the, but that's oh, it. There's a, there's, we have a lot of, a couple of... Uh, What's, oh, this is Mariah Carey. This, this is Dynamite. What is this? What is this? This was, uh, this was a Las Vegas, a, a Las Vegas uh, um, residency that I did with David Corrins, a set designer. I know David. I, yeah, I, you know David? I, yeah. I saw, just hang this down for one second, but we'll t it's, don't link it to an aside. But David, when David got started at the Blue Heron Arts Center, where I told you I was, there was a little black box. I mean, a really little black box that's smaller than the space yeah. that he created an environment that was unbelievable. Yeah. Anyone awards for it. Yeah. So I know David for a long yeah. time. Yeah, so but David and I, in fact, that's, to, I'm sorry. Yeah. And that, was, that was, uh, that was. That's, so David did this too? David did the scenic design. The first time we ever worked together and I, I adore him and he's just, he's you really know. Cool. He's really cool. You know, I, I, in most of my shows, do the complete production design where I'll do sets and lighting, uh -huh. but the opportunity to collaborate with someone like David was awesome. And what was this, a rose? Is that, back, back to the image please. Is that a rose? What is that? No, those are butterfly wings. Butterflies wings. Wing. Okay. Butterfly wings. Oh, from her song, of course. Right. Duh. Right. 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 <laughs> I'm not, I don't know all of Mariah's songs, so. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, I think we, I think that's it. I think, was there an, another live picture there? Um, oh, now we're going to painting. No, we don't, we're going to hold those just for a minute. Because we want to talk about some. Okay. I think. Do you want to talk a little bit more? Yeah. Well, I mean, he, here's the thing. I, I've been painting with light for my. Oh, whole yeah, you know career. what it was—the story about what, how you started to do. You told me earlier how when how you make, made the images that you put into your portfolio, and then when people needed yeah. a set design, you came up with your own. Well, this was kind of you know them. chicken and the egg. So so what happened was, I as I said, I've been painting with light for you know 40 plus years. And about 15 years ago, it was for my 50th birthday, um, my husband gave me a set of oils and a canvas and said, you've always kind of itched with the idea of painting, here you go. And I'd never done it, I'd never bought paint, I'd never really sketched before. I, I work in computers when I'm designing things, but 
So, um, so you, you never gave the people images before this? No, this, this, no, this, no. This was the beginning this of This was the beginning of a new... Of, of taking... Yeah. So I started to sketch. Let me just, I want to ask you an obtuse question, if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, okay. Because I've painted a little bit. Do, do you, how the effect of working with the lights and creating a lighting show, the effect it has on you, your energy level, and painting, are they similar or are they different? They're, they're uh, absolutely exactly the same. That's it's what a I meditative thought. state. That's what I thought. Except it's motivated instead of by music when I'm painting, but by this incredible silence that happens when I'm standing in front of a canvas. And in the silence, there's a lot of music to me. Um, what happens is, is that when I start painting, the negative space between the brush strokes tell me what the next move is, and the painting tells me what I'm supposed to do. It's, mm. it's this strange thing that I didn't even recognize was going on. So say that again, because I think that's really profound. Well, the, the, negative the, neg the negative space tells me what my next brush stroke is. So if I'm composing something, I really have no preconceived idea mm -hmm. other than stylistically what I'd like to do. Right. And, and Part of the stuff that I do, because I always look at it as derivative, I think all great art is derivative Everything of other things. Everything is derivative to some degree. There's three movies that, that, that affected me, and they're three very different movies. The first movie that got me uh, thinking about painting was Six Degrees of Separation. And the weird thing about that movie was, the, was uh, uh, the, uh, Donald Sutherland um, in the opening scene is freaking out because he thinks this painting has been stolen and he pulls up and he says it's a Kandinsky, a two-sided Kandinsky <laughs> and he spins it ba back and forth and I looked at that and I knew, didn't know Kandinsky from Adam and I went holy shit I think I could do something like that and then there's a, little, there's a scene a little bit later where he's talking about children painting and he's talking about the, diff the years of the, pa uh, uh, of, of the kindergartners that paint and the first year olds, the first graders, the second graders, and I'm paraphrasing. And he says, and by the fourth grade or the fifth grade, it's all crap. But the third grade, they're little Picassos and they're little Matisses. And the thing at the end of that sentence is because at some point the teacher comes and pulls the brush away from them. And it was like, holy shit, this is like something that I think I can do. And I was inspired by that. I went to a Russian exhibit in, at the mm -hmm. Guggenheim that year, and I it kind of imprinted that stuff to me. The, the, the next movie was a very small documentary about Picasso painting on glass, which I thought was amazing because he was painting on glass, and then he would wipe it off and paint it on glass, $3 million, paint it on glass, $3 million, and wipe it off. And I was like, holy shit, these Picassos are happening just like my lighting design. Like, I throw it up there, you see it, and I turn the lights off, and you never see it again. And there was something ephemeral about that uh -huh, process yeah, that right, I went, right, right, holy right. shit, this is great. The and then, of course, of the temporary fact that Picasso mm -hmm. threw this stuff out in the, in, in the, right, in right. the atmosphere, and then it was gone. Released it. Which right. was what my lighting design and is. And the third one? And the third one, of course, was, 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 Jack's, was the Pollock movie. Oh, well, of course. Because when I saw Ed Harris start painting the Guggenheim uh, mural, uh -huh and watched him paint a mural that was aping Jackson Pollock that was not Jackson Pollock, that could have been Jackson Pollock, I went, screw this, I'm, I, I've, got to, I've got to try and do this. And it resonated in my head, and I think we had seen, Curtis and I had seen that movie at that, around, around the time. It, the, what, what, this, but, but not the movie, but the, the time you got the pace, now we're talking about, about 15, 16 That's years That's right, ago. about 15, 16 okay. years ago. So you got, and then you, and, and then you started inserting your, your stuff so, yeah, so into I, your portfolio so I, that you presented to right. your lighting people. Because that story that I love, I'm going to have to short circuit it, unfortunately. Yeah. But I love that story where you started doing sketches that you inserted into your portfolio. So when people were looking for lighting designs, you would show them your sketches and then they would inevitably because, pick yours yeah. because they liked it so much and That's they didn't the need to go any further. Really you, just cool. said the, you just told oh, the story. Told, and I I'm, mean, specifically... The only reason I'm sure we have, we're running close on time, but okay. I want to show some of your images. And okay. we have a couple of, of things to talk about with the images. Great. So let's start with the image. Here's, here's we have one here. So yeah. this, this probably, I think this image was probably done in the first six months when I had paints. Right. We, we wanted to show one, too, yeah. just to show the evolution. Yeah, so that, that's you've... a very early work that... Um, that, you know, I kind of, you know, afterwards thought it was great. Okay, so th this is an early work, and then this one? And I think this is the, st this kind of talks about the way, uh, uh, this is my, my sort of Russian constructive aping, but um, this is a pretty big piece, and I like to work in large formats. This so 72 by 48 yeah, inches. A, that's a big and piece. And it's oil on canvas. Yes, yeah, yes. too. 
Is this, there another big one too? This is oil on canvas. This is oil on canvas, but this is this is very similar to the portfolio pieces that I've sold to artists. What I did for this was it's a composite photograph that I that I photographed, Photoshop, put other images in. Uh, and then I had it printed on canvas, and then I painted on the canvas. So it's a different style. Oh wow! So it's it's you know it's layers. Got layers. It's got layers. La yeah. it, it, the colors are terrific. The palette's yeah. wonderful. This uh, you know I take uh, you know materials that's laying around. Um, uh, Curtis had bought a. Uh, my husband bought He's a. He's on a packing crate. Yeah, he bought a 3D printer, and it came out in packing crates. And I said, oh wait a minute. Let me take that. So I painted on that. And this told me what to paint. Because packing crepe out of out of uh, uh, What did you plywood, get in the big pat box? What was it? <laughs> it was a 3D printer that was the size of a phone book. It was 38 by 36. That's but really what's big. interesting about this, it was almost its paint by numbers. Because you know this post press board where it's all kinds of slivers of uh, different paint? Well, each one of those told me, I need to, you need to paint me a different color. And it told me what it wanted to be. You're I painting didn't tell the negative it. space again. Exactly the same process. Uh, uh, this is just one of one of my pieces. It's sort of a. a, a it's a large one though, too. Seventy-two yeah. by forty-eight. Yeah. I mean, I, once again, it's a great example of how the negative pa space sort of dictates the positive. I would do a series of curved lines. They would they would show me other curved lines, and I would fill them in. And you know, I'd sort of dance around this thing. You know, this one took me quite a while actually, because it's a big one. Um, okay. Oh, I love this. This is oh, terrific. Thanks. This is really. This is all palette, and this was a mistake. This was a painting that started out to be one of these sort of illustrative pieces. So wait, wait, wait. What do you mean it was a mistake? Because it got, uh, it got, it had too much paint on it, and it had too many layers of paint on it, and I got very frustrated with it. And I'd never worked with a palette knife before. I took out a palette knife and I started to smear the palette so knife. So after you made the, after you thought it was a mistake. After I thought it was a mistake. But if you've got it ultimately a product that works for you, it's not really a mistake, right? It's only it's a, a momentary. A thought. momentary <laughs> thought. Yeah, and and I mean for me, I looked at it and when I thought it was a, it was just a mess, and then I put out a palette knife and it started to grow into so some. So really, organic. it was a challenge to bring out the palette knife, is what it was, yeah, right? Yeah. Instead yeah. of a mistake. Yeah. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. This one I love too. Uh, this is a combination of, um, you know, doing some brush work and then starting to get into the drip work that I really like. So this Jackson is a transition Pollock. piece. So this is you. much a transition piece. That get tra it's a transition from doing oil on canvas to dripping. Yes. Yes. And, and you, do you pour it? What are you dripping? Um, I, I this one basically what I ended up doing was uh, having the pieces of paint there and then just, you know, letting paint thinner. You know, drip down the side and let it let it take its toll with gravity. So, it was the gravity actually made the the streaks in it. It wasn't me trying to intentionally make that happen. And it, this was one that I had done, and then I changed its position, uh, put stood it up upright, walked out, came back in the studio, and it had appeared this way. So it, this was this was kind of like was painted for me by some other hand other than me. So. I let that happen. You know? Oh, that's, that's wonderful that you can do that, too. Um, uh, then we just take that down for one minute, because I just want to ask him a couple, oh, on the, on the, because that was a transition to drip work. Now, yes. do you do things specifically drip? Do you yes. incorporate it with your other yes. stuff? There's I mean, a, there's is, a, it, is it just, is it now another element to all the pieces? I mean, or do, you, do you still do stuff that's... Well, if, I'm, if, I, if I set out to do a drip painting, That's I will set it out differently. And mm -hmm. what I will do is lay the canvas on the floor very much like Jackson Pollock did. I use house paint. I did research to find out the kind of paint he used, which, of course, you can't get anymore because it causes cancer in laboratory rats. You, oh. It's made in, it's actually the Ducalux that he used to use is made in India. And I could find it, but I wouldn't want to bring it in. So I end up buying house paint. And the great thing about house paint and going to Home Depot these days is you can make any color that you want. So I decide what color palette is going to be, if it's going to be earth tones, I'll get five or six buckets of that paint, and then I will lay canvas down, and I will literally walk around that canvas with a, with a stirring stick, and, and I will do the, that kind of drip painting. But it still is the same process for me. I'll do something, it'll create a negative space, I'll fill that negative space, which will create another negative space, but it's, it's a little bit more organic. And I have one piece here, I think, that's... Yeah, well, let's go, we have a few more. I just want to make sure. Here, this one's a mixed media on canvas. Uh, this is one my latest. Pony. Yeah, this is my latest um, uh, That's kind of approach. That's very lovely. I love, the, I love your colors, the blues and the browns Thank and you. the palette. Um, one of the artists that I work for, John Mellencamp, is a very accomplished artist. Does some great oh, well, you, pieces. We all know who John Mellencamp right. is, right? And, and uh, he, he did great portraits. Take but the camera, take the picture down while he tell, tells us his story. So, so, um, 
uh, and I designed his shows. And, and the thing you were talking about, the, about the portfolios, is I also designed his backdrops, which are composite photographs that I have painted. So I've, I've sort of incorporated my original art because he's an artist and appreciates that. Anyway, I went to his studio in, in Bloomington, and he's doing a bunch of new things, and he's doing assemblies. Not collage, but assemblies. He calls them assemblies, which are, I don't, I don't know what the distinction is. I'm sure there is, but to me, it's just p cutting up this, bits and pieces and making art out of it. And I left him, and I did the same thing. I went, I can do that. And I went home, pulled out a box of photographs from a Paul Simon tour. One Trick Pony was the name of that Paul Simon tour. Cut them up. And I started to, and they were pictures of all of us from 40 years ago. And I started to apply that, put some other media in it, painted over it, poured wax on it, did all kinds of crazy things to it. And it spoke to me and it became, it became a piece. So I'm, I'm doing, I, I do one or two of those a year when I want to not, you know, actually have a brush in my hand. Now let's now show us that piece again that he just, this was the first, that, that, that was his first, first uh, awesome lodge. Uh, and, and then it, there's one more, I think. Uh, that's, is, no, this is, this, is a, this is a Jackson Pollock one, right? Yeah, that's the drip. That's so the this is a drip, drip you were talking about yeah. earlier. Yeah. That we, and this is huge. Yeah, this, this is, is 98 huge. by 60. Yeah, it's huge. Done in house paints yep. on canvas. Yep. <laughs> yep. Now, uh, this is... And this is another one of the assemblies. This is what you wanted to show us. This, yeah. This so, one's a little smaller. This is 24 by 18. Yeah, this is smaller, and this one's a little bit more emotional to me. And, and What's emotional about it's it? It's just, it's, it was, I did it in a transitional part of my life, and I was feeling very deep emotions, and I was, uh, it's got certain things in there that represent certain memories of mine, and... Can put that back up again. Let's see. It, it, it's uh, um, what are the things that well there's a couple of pictures there's 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 two photographs of myself and Curtis as very young boys uh -huh. and and it was walking down a memory of what things might have been before and what things became and 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 it's sort of a transition in, in so the young uh, acrobat is that supposed to be indicative of you changing positions I think, that, I think I think so I think so I think that's what it meant I didn't I don't think it meant that at the time but I so just we never because uh, I that's a that's a concept that I often explore with other artists artists or people that create art about, you know, like when, you, when, when, when the playwright writes a play and then the actors come in and do the play and the actors bring something new to it, did the, does, does the playwright always know what he was saying or does he discover it right. in the process? The same thing like here with your title. It's like it has a meaning that you didn't even know it meant until yeah, and someone sees it, it has a comment on it. And basically right? it was an old book that had interesting type that caught my eye and I thought, oh, the young acrobat, you know? I mean, I don't know what, what resonates with me at the time, you know? And that's one of the things about being able to express, you know, this, this, this part of me that I, I now, I've now gotten to a place in my life where I don't control that expression anymore. For years and years and years, I was, a, I was you know, and I still you am. You as a lighting designer. As a lighting designer, I'm, I, I'm a hired more. hand. I'm a hired hand. Basically, mm -hmm. I have music that I have to light. I have budgets that I have to fit within. And when I go downstairs into the studio, I have no, there's no handcuffs on me. There is, <laughs> it is completely free. Free. I'm yeah. free. And, I'm, and my only limitation is, you know, my stamina to stand on my feet, you know, in a cold basement and paint, which is where I paint these days. So, you know, it's, uh, so it's good. I, to a great degree, this show is a little bit of me just sort of opening the door to this part of my life. I'm, part of me really wants to please people and be successful at it, but really more for me it's to get, is to watch people react to it because I've never sort of put it out there. You know, I'm, I'm, my work has been a little bit safer because... How did you make the connection for the show? Um, I made the connection to the show through some friends that we have in the community. Um, and, and people who have been to the house and seen paintings and said, you know, don't you show, don't you sell? Because, I, I, I mean, I have empty walls that are all filled with my art. Uh, and I said, no, 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 no. And then they introduced me to Kat, who runs the White Room Gallery, and she, she said, send me pictures of your stuff. So, of course, I couldn't send her pictures of my stuff until I reshot them. I shot them, I printed them out really nice, and I handed it to her. She came back to the house, went in the basement. She said, well, I like these three. And then she went in and saw my and hundred the, paintings. And, she, and Are these, these going to be in the show? Yes, both of these are going to be in the show. And what are these show. called? There's, um... Uh, this one here. This is freedom. This one's freedom. Freedom and uh, freedom. Freedom. Oh, oh. Uh, and freedom. I'm actually, I don't remember the name of that one. 
I named them. That, the, wait, wait, also, should we, did we show all the images? I think there was one image you wanted to show that isn't finished yet. Oh, yeah, there's one piece. Can I we, think it's one, the we have last... one more image, do we? I think I'm sorry, one, guys. There's one, I think there's one more after okay, No, this. we did that one. No. And one more. I think the last one. No. It's okay. I it's must right. have got lost. Must have but, got lost. I, but we had an image that I know you. There had, is. There is one painting. Finished. Yeah. There's one painting that is unfinished. There it is. Okay. Great. It's work it's in work, progress. Yeah. This and is 72 by 48. We have about a minute and a half. Okay. So you want to say something about this in a minute well, and a half? Well, I, uh, I, I started this one when I knew I was going to have a show, and I thought, okay, let's see. Now that you know you have a deadline, what can come out of you? And this is what's coming out of me. And I don't know how much more I'm going to work on it, but it's you called Wicked Prop. You can take it down. So you'll, you'll have to come to see the show and see and how see much it, he's worked on see it. See if I added any more. <laughs> if he did anything. Right, right. <laughs> no, he'll do something more. I'm just, I'm sure. I'm just being devil's advocate a little no, bit. No, it's good. <laughs> so, so Stephen, you, you, your show with a group, how many artists? Is four artists there? There's four artists. Four artists at the, at the White Gallery in Bridgehampton, August uh, 22nd through September 10th. And the opening is... Uh, August 25th from 6 to 8 if yeah, people want to stop have, by. I think they have wine and cheese or something. It's 2415 Main Street in Bridgehampton on August 25th is the opening. Steve, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It, it's a lot of fun talking about these kinds of things. Of, well, there are a lot of connections, that, mm -hmm. uh, through lines that actually just kind of bubble up to the surface. Yeah. No, it's uh, great. It's. Uh, it's a great experience, and thank you for uh, showing my stuff to the community because we live in a really creative community, and, and I think I'm getting some of my inspiration. I know I'm getting some of my We're inspiration. We're really lucky. We really Just are. driving around. I mean, I live, a, I live one mile from Jackson Pollock's house, so if that doesn't infuse me, I don't know what else does, you know, so it's great. Guess what? We're out of time, folks. Right. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.